call this meeting's order on June 7th at 7 o'clock and turn to see Joe Ferguson for Eric Pippen. Uh, okay. Dear Matt, please publish the following public notice for one insertion on Monday, May 30th, 2022. Town of Brock, notice of public hearing, historic district. Recording in progress. Your district commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 7th, 2022, at 7 p.m. at the Brock Town Annex 134 Brock Illinois Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform. We the following application for president certificate for COVID. HDC 22-30, 13 Gravel Street, Arnaud Bourgeois owner, Peter Springsteel applicant, additions for renovations, pin number 26191841243. HDC 22-3137, London Road, David Carpenter owner, Peter Springsteel applicant, addition, pin number 26191710813. HDC 22-32, 148 High Street, and a Troyano owner, Peter Springsteel applicant, accessible dwelling unit, pin number 26191831318. ACC 22 33 28 Academy Lane, KRE BSL, Husky Mystic LLC owner, favor of remodelers, applicant, replacement windows and siding repair, pin number 26191831695. ACC 22 34 102 Library Street, Shannon. Wagle owner, John Henderson, construction applicant, replace roof shingles, pin number 26191720278. ACC 22-35, rep on place, Elizabeth Wilson, owner applicant, replace fence, pin number 26191720323. The Zoom meeting link will be posted in town to the town's website, meeting calendar, or can be attended by visiting www.zoom. Uh, U.S. webinar ID 825-1927-9345, password, password 118-571, or by phone 1312-626-679. Applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the planning department, 134 Broughton, Road, Brown, Connecticut, dated this 30th day of May 2022, at Brown, Connecticut, not very accessible, and nobody can do this. Uh, I make a motion to waive the reading of the hearing procedures. So moved or seconded. All in favor? I think I need to do a roll call. Three. Aye. 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 Ferguson. Aye. What was the way to waive what? I couldn't hear it. The reading of the hearing procedures. Oh, I. I. The, that motion is approved, but I would like to read them. They're over there on the table. HDC 22 16 12 Water Street, Mr. Holt. It's a continuation of a public yes. right? I was here. Some things as far as it here, looking at, I just have one C as far as we're just trying to add information onto it. Um, the freeze, um, some of your things there, now, Sarah, is 
panel is um, it's a form of picture out of here, but I guess it shows what it actually looks like and the panels that are removed. So the idea is summertime, they get put in there. And <coughs> summertime, they will take them out. The last page will show what it looks like with the panels out. And then the first page here is the one where additional panels in, uh, the panels. Up on top here, they're one foot by three foot transom windows. Those will be permanent. And these will stay permanent for the year. And so you know, excuse me for interrupting. I have to recuse myself. Um, these transoms that you're looking at here, uh, which is the west view, if you're looking at the south view, they would be kind of right here. Um, now you didn't have to like, decide. So all these, these transoms go here and then they go down this way, which is across the back side. Um, those again would be permanent. And then the easy panels are just the ones that allow them to pop in and pop out. <clears throat> they go into a track, they lock in, and then sometimes they pop them out, which is more. Um, everything else, as far as height wise and so forth, puts down there. Um, first, that would be 10 foot, 3 inches, and then steps up to about 13 foot, 2 inches. So it follows an existing, um, <clears throat> follows an existing uh, addition that's in the back there. So. The question we had last time. Yeah, just like what it is. I guess nothing was out there. So these I just have to put everything that like what materials are and so forth. Like the so same like we're gonna match the roofing um that kind of replaced um, on there. So like the shed where it says here, uh, standing seam metal roof match factory square, which is the, the new roof that was included. So so we'll do the same thing there. So basically just want to say more detail. Yes, folks. This the last time this is this part of this. Okay. It should do this. And the like you didn't have heights on there and um, it's like trans windows. It's like it's all closed. Anybody on the commission have any questions or comments for this application? Bonnie? Oh, sorry. I said no, but I was on mute. Sorry. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? Uh, All right, then HDC 22-16 is closed. <clears throat> HDC 22-30, 13 gravel streets. I think that Peter I'm here. Peter Springsteel here. Okay. You want to share a screen, Peter? Um, I can either share a screen or you can use the drawings that you have on yours. What either way, what's preferable? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Probably go quicker if you share a screen. Okay. 
Okay, you have to free me up. Did you say beam me up? <laughs> well, we could say that. <laughs> uh, appropriate uh. thing to say. Okay, uh, Peter Springsteel, architect, 105 Star Street Mystic, here tonight uh, representing Arnaud and Barbara Bourgeois, and they live at 13 Gravel Street, um, which is affectionately known as the Spite House. Because when you go back in time, when they built this house, it projects out beyond all the other houses on Gravel Street. And apparently there was some uh, dispute at that time. So um, this guy won. Um, what we're proposing to do here, we'll go back to, this is a photo of the front of the house. We're not doing anything to the front of the house, but just to orient you. Um, gravel Street here, the front of the house, and you're looking down the driveway that's existing. And what you're going to see down that driveway is a small addition on the back of the house, which you will see from Gravel Street. And then you're going to see um, you're going to see a, a new detached uh, garage outbuilding structure way in the back of the property. So this is basically a facsimile of this view right here where you can see that garage in the back and then the little addition right here off the back of the house. And again, you can see that addition from the north side, which is right here. This is the one story addition. And also we are proposing to add this dormer. Right now, there are two gable dormers on this side of the house facing the north, and we're proposing to replace it with this shed dormer um, in their present location. I go now to the site plan. So here is the existing house. I'm um, sorry, right here. And this is the one-story addition on the back. There's also a deck addition right here on the back, which you really don't see from anywhere along a public way. It's low to the ground, and pretty much blocked out by the house. Um, and then there'll be an extension of the driveway back into the outbuilding, which is located right here. And that outbuilding contains several components. There's a lean-to garage, right here, it's open on the sides, but it has a shed roof on it. And then there are two garage bays, and then I, uh, we're calling a tasting room at the very end right here. In addition to that, there's a, a pergola. What's in that last room? Uh, it's called a tasting room. Uh, oh, okay. And you can imagine what might be going on there, but um, there's a pergola attached to that area of the building. And then there's a low in-ground pool right here. Now the pool is very low. I don't think you're really gonna see that from the public way. You will get glimpses of the pergola and the outbuilding from Gravel Street from the north east over here. point out where your shed dormer is on that diagram, please. Shed dormer sits on the second floor over this rear L here. This was an addition done about 20 years ago. You have a picture of the what's there now with street view or side view? Let's see what I got. That's the new. Yeah, it's an, I have to share a different file, but I'll do that in a moment. Okay. Let me walk you through all this. So this bird's eye view gives you a good sort of overall picture of what's going on here. There's the shed dormer, which you will see from Gravel Street right over here. This is Gravel Street. Um, this is an existing wooden fence. We're proposing to add wooden fence on the back and the sides of the same nature as this one. 
And then you can see the pergola and the outbuilding right here. All right, I'm gonna unshare this and take you to the other file. Second. So this is the configuration of the dormers today. And I actually designed these and I, to me, they're kind of heavy looking, uh, a little overpowering for this side of the house. I think the shed dormer is a better fit actually. And it's probably more in keeping with what you'd see on an older building rather than these gable dormers on an added L. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the other file, is that okay? Yeah, yep. I only asked because people were asking on the other house about the shed dormer and the- Oh, uh, that's right. So the materials on these additions are going to match what's on the existing house. There's the flatboard siding. We may go to um, fiber cement flatboard siding just for durability, but uh, the effect will be exactly the same as what you see with the wood siding. We're going to have uh, Marvin Elevate flat wood windows with simulated divided lights. Um, this is the addition here. We're going to do a uh, thin stone veneer uh, on the foundation to try to match the existing stone veneer or actual stone foundation that's on the existing part of the house right here. Um, architectural grade asphalt shingles on the roof to match what's on the existing roof here now and painted PVC trim for the windows, casings, corner board, spacious, and the like. And that would also be the same case on the dormers. Didn't they just reside that house? Uh, not that I know oh, of. Oh, maybe it was next door. <clears throat> yeah, there was a lot of work they did on the house next door. Yeah. I don't think there's been anything done here. But, um, so the same thing. Same routine with the uh, dormer, flatboard siding, painted trim, Marvin Elevate window. All those materials are listed right here. Now the outbuilding um, got a little bit different look. Here are elevations of the outbuilding. So you're gonna see you know, maybe this much of the garage from the street, um, sort of at the south side of the house. And then you're gonna see this stuff over here, the pergola roof dormer from the other side of Gravel Street. We're gonna do a board and batten siding and that'll be fiber cement, again, for durability. Um, painted uh, PVC trim on the eaves, brakes, we do have a crown molding on the, the uh, rakes here and the eaves. Um, and the Marvin Elevate windows again. And uh, architectural grade asphalt shingles on the roofs. We've got a pergola uh, element here that'll have a little copper roof on it and a weather vane. And the pergola I'm thinking is gonna be some sort of natural wood material or a composite look, looks like a weathered wood. So it's gonna, the overall effect will be a weathered wood uh, structure as opposed to a painted white kind of structure. And then again, the fence that I mentioned is gonna match the wood fence that's on the uh, north side of the property, right now, which is what you see here.
And the deck will be probably EK hardwood. You won't see the deck just for your information. So you won't see the deck? <clears throat> no, you won't see the deck at all. Because probably EK doesn't qualify as a material type. Why not? Because it's probably. It's got to be definitely. Oh, oh, prob the probably part. Okay. I, I thought you meant the EPE. <laughs> Will be EPE. Sorry. Definitive. So that's my presentation. I don't know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Springfield? No, I don't. Any comments? I think it looks good. I like the yellow. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 22-30 is closed. Sorry. HDC 22-31, 37 to London Road. Uh, Mr. Springsteel. Okay, uh, Peter Springsteel here again, architect, uh, representing the carpenters at 37 New London Road. Um, this is our neighborhood map. Uh, West Mystic Avenue is here, Allen Street, New London Road, downtown Mystic is over this way. And our subject property is right here. And then this is a photograph of the front of the existing house right here. So what we're seeking to do here is uh, add a one story room, which you can see shaded right here. And that will be viewable from the road, from New London Road. Um, you'll see at least the front side of this you might get a fleeting glimpse of the side and you do not see the back. Um, so the existing house is clapboard, got uh, double hung windows, six over six with uh, shutters. And on our addition, we're proposing the same kind of window. We'll do a Marvin Elevate with simulated divided lights. So it looks like the real thing. And we'll do shutters to match the existing shutters on the house. We'll also do a clapboard siding and party plank for durability and the painted PVC corner board to match the house and rakes and eaves will be uh, the same material. On the side of the addition, we've Got a group of four double hung windows, six over six. And we are proposing two skylights on the roof, but I really don't think those skylights are going to be that obvious. In a uh, 2D environment, you do see them sticking up a little bit here. But I think in in perspective and reality, you're really not going to see those at all because your eye is down the roof as you pass by the road. And then on the rear of the house, we, we have a uh, French door that you don't see at all. And um, I mistakenly put a single French door here. The owner wants a double French door. Given that you're not going to see it, um, hopefully you'll allow us to do that when we're coming back here. Prove it. But if so, I will I will do that. Uh, architectural asphalt shingles on the roof. And I think that's really all we're going to do. There's a stone wall here that's going to remain. See it right here and right here in the plan. So we're going to leave that alone. So this will be the front of the house now. Any questions? Peter, was this house and, and lot at some point attached to the lot to the left that's on West Mystic? Were they I think 
<laughs> I think it was. I think it was the carriage house for that house at one time, long time ago. And, and I think it was owned by the same person not a whole long time ago. I think they may have subdivided it off or something. Could be. I'm not, I don't know. Sure. There's a, there's a very interesting Quonset hut in the backyard. Here, Quonset hut buff. There's sitting right here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> What's in the Quonset hut? I don't know. <laughs> don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> Good thing we're not reviewing that. <laughs> right, honey. I I grew up in Quonset huts. <laughs> well, they're historic structures. I yeah, I know. Sort of iconic of the Second World War, or something. Like that. Any of the commission members have any questions or comments for Mr. Springsteel? No, no, looks good. Mr. Springsteel, have anything else you want to add? I'm good. Would anyone in the audience like to see more of this application? Would anyone in the audience like to see against this application? HDC 22-31 is closed. HDC 22. HGC 22 32148 High Street. Mr. Springsteel. Oh, I'm back. All right. Popular guy tonight. No, gotta take it while it's there. <laughs> okay, uh, Peter Springsteel, architect, 105 Star Street Mystic, here representing Anna Troiano. Um, she has property at, I don't know if I can remember the address is. 148 High. Thank you. 148 High Street. And we were, we were before you several months ago with a similar application for an accessory dwelling on this uh, rather large lot in downtown. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You came in. And, so we we uh, rethought a bunch of things on it, and we're coming back to you with a new proposal. And we did present this um, informally a few weeks ago or a month ago or something like that. Um, just to orient you again, here's uh, West Main Street going up the hill. The Baptist Church is right here. And then we're one, two, three houses from the intersection of West Mystic on High Street. This uh, is High Street on the site plan, the existing dwelling right here, and then the proposed accessory dwelling right here. Uh, this is one lot. We're going to keep it merged as one lot. Um, and we're not proposing any driveways coming into this at all. There's an existing driveway over here. Which we're going to leave. These are just the uh, floor plans of the structure, um, which I don't know of our interest to you at all. You but, had that, um, that little arched doorway originally, right? We did. And yeah. this L, this uh, L shape was going out the other direction before. So we flipped this 180 degrees. So the, the entrance is here now. And that archway is now gone. So from High Street, this is the elevation that you'll see. Um, we actually simplified the building a little bit, taking that archway off. Um, we do want to do all stone. And I've got the sample board of the stone right here. And that product is called out. There's a list of materials up here all called out up here but it's sort of a random pattern. Um, if I scroll into here, I'll show you better. The existing house is wood, right? Or stucco? It's uh, wood clapboards. And I, I have some 3Ds I'll show you of that. But the pattern that we're selecting is this one right here. It's a little more random pattern, uh, rather than a cut pattern like this. 
old mosaic and it's got a sort of a mix of browns and grays in it a little more life to it than this one or this one This uh, is the east facade, which faces towards downtown. I think you're going to see the top of top, top half of this from downtown in different places. It's a distant view, but I believe you will see that. So we've got this um, sort of star-shaped uh, traditional railing here that we will do out of a matte composite material. So it'll read as white, but it'll have a matte finish, and it'll be uh, vinyl. We also have um, corbels, false uh, beams, purlins that are projecting out of the gable end. We have some brackets coming off this little um, entrance canopy that's got a little curved uh, feature to it right here, which you'll see from High Street. We've got Basement style window, but they're going to be simulated divided lights. And there'll be Marvin elevates again, so they're clad wood windows. They will have casings on them, orange casings that'll be painted PVC. There is a little pergola structure attached to the front of the house, and that's going to be used for growing vine. So there'll be some. A vineage on that. Oh, well, yeah, make that out of. Um, we will do that out of a composite material or, or uh, no, we will be a composite and it'll be a, uh, a weathered wood kind of a look to it. it doesn't jump out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in this drawing, I did a 2D orthographic elevation, which is what this one is. You get a sense of the scale of the building in 2D. But then this drawing is in perspective. So you're seeing this house, which is set back more in proportion to what you'll see in reality as you walk along the street. So it, it looks secondary to the main opposed to competing with it or the house next door for that. Um, this is the existing house. It's clapboard. Very interesting sort of gambrel shape to the roof. Um, and then this Italian next door. So this is a different architecture, but I think it fits in with the character of this high street neighborhood. And it's secondary to the main. And you can see the photos of the two adjacent houses. So that's my presentation. I'm happy to take questions. There's a sidewalk. There is a sidewalk on High Street here. But then from to get to this house or? Well, we haven't really looked at the hardscape other than the deck right here now, but there'll probably be some step stones to the yeah, to the house. Okay. Well, nothing all at this point. We would come in if there's anything above grade, but okay. nothing planned at this point. There is an existing fence here, which we would keep for the moment. It's, it is an accessory residence, though, right? It's a, an accessory dwelling unit. Yeah. How many square feet is it? It's under the whatever the requirement is. Mm. I think we're allowed 800 square feet. And I think we're in that neighborhood. I don't see the number on here. Okay. But 
I know we cannot exceed 800 square feet. There's no second floor. This is just a roof line up here. There is a second floor deck up. And that's access with a pull down stair that normally you don't even see because it's out of your line of sight hidden on the roof. I think in our earlier scheme, we had a spiral stair, so that's gone. Yeah, 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 that's right. So it's a, it's just a pull down step? Pull down ladder, kind of like what you would see in your home going up to your attic, but it'll be oh. an outdoor version of that. And the only time you'll see that is when they pull the ladder. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HTC 22-32 is closed. HDC 22-33, uh, 20 Academy Lane Mystic, Applicant Bay Brooklyn Modelers. Right here. Is anyone from Bay Brook here? We would know if they were. Uh, okay. I move to continue this application. Second. In favor of Brady? Aye. Mary? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Uh, no. You're, you're delaying it. It looks like Scott is there, and that's the name on the email in is the it? audience. Does he know he's up, maybe? Is that Scott? Scott, are you here for the 20 Academy Point Lane application? You're muted. I mean, it doesn't have its last yeah. name on the application. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it okay. is. Him. Yeah. Okay, I don't know who suggested that it's delayed. Well, because nobody responded to you yeah. being here. Oh, okay. Call you if you didn't respond. All right, I wasn't sure that I was muted or unmuted. Okay, all right. Uh, my name is Scott Farquharson. I work for Babe Brooklyn Modelers, the contractor for this project. I am representing Academy Point of Mystic. Our proposal is to replace 40 windows and exterior trim and siding repairs. The windows need replacement due to age, condition, and lack of energy efficiency. This is an assisted living facility and this update will be beneficial to the elderly residents. We will be replacing 40 windows, not all the windows at this time. These are the most in need of replacement. The style and sizing will match the existing windows so they will keep the same look as the existing. Also, we will be replacing damage siding and trim. This replacement will be like for like of materials and paint finishes. And in conclusion, the building needs upgrades and repairs, but we will keep the same visual appearance as the existing building. Thank you. Scott, are the, are the windows that, are, that you're replacing, are they the original windows? They, yes, they are the original windows. From when it was a school? Yes. Really? So you have casement and double hung in your presentation. Yes, they're going to match. There okay. are some double hung and there are some casements. So, so whatever you have, you're replacing. Yes, we're replacing okay. exactly the same style and opening. So they're just more modern, nothing's actually changing. That is correct. Right. Um, does anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? No. 
Yeah, uh, well, I'll just confirm. So Scott, in the application, we have um, ply gem windows. Is that what you're going with? That is correct, yes. We've gone through the manufacturers and that's the closest replication we can get. And did I hear you say, you're not replacing all of them, you're replacing 40, which are the ones that are in the most need of repair? That is correct, yes. Is there anywhere where you delineated which 40 you're replacing? Repeat that. Is there anywhere where you delineated which 40 of the windows that you're replacing? Um, I don't have the exact locations, I do not. I had pictures, but I was not able to uh, download them onto this. I think we need that. Uh, we need to depict in the evidence which of the windows you're replacing. Yes. Uh, but my suggestion would be, assuming that none of my commission members have any questions, concerns, or objections to this, that we can continue your application and then you just submit um, exterior pictures of the building and circle the ones that you're replacing. And then okay. hearing, okay. I, I don't even think that you really need to. I don't have any problem with that. That one piece of formal evidence. Okay. Does anyone have any comments on what I just said? No. no. Okay. Scott, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. All right. Well, no one has anything else. I'll ask if anyone in the audience like to speak for this application. Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 22-33 is closed. Continued. Continued. I'm so sorry. Getting ahead of myself. So who made the, um, who seconded the uh, motion? Well, I didn't actually make a motion because I got really ahead of myself. So I'm going to do it all over again. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. I move to continue HDC 22-33. I second it. All in favor, Pretty. Aye. Moriarty, aye. Ferguson, aye. Null, aye. Application is formally. Um, HTC 22 34 102 Library Streets, John Henderson Construction. Hi, um, if Shannon isn't here, I can represent, I work for John Henderson Construction um, and we'll be contracting the project. Okay. Okay, so um, what our plan is, is to reshingle um, the roof. It's currently a wood roof. So we'll be stripping uh, the shingles off of the roof and replacing it with asphalt. Uh, the color that we've chosen is Atlas Majestic Shake and that's designed to mimic the look of a wood roof. Um, and it's got a 50 year warranty on it. So we'll be replacing that and we'll be uh, putting down some plywood too as well, uh, just to make sure that it's not gonna leak or anything like that. So uh, it, it should mimic the look of wood already. So it should fit in with, with any other wood roofs in the area, um, but we're just gonna be reshingling the roof. Because I know you're not Shannon Weigel. So can you just introduce yourself for the record for, for yep, you? yeah. So it's Kendall Scott for John Henderson Construction. Okay, keep going. Oh, so, so that was it. So, so you're stripping it and putting what on? We're gonna be putting on an asphalt shingle roof, and that's Atlas. Um, who's the, the maker of those shingles and the color is majestic shake and that's a 34 square roof. I, th I don't even know if she has to come before the HDC <laughs> it's like for life. It's wood. It's not like life. Oh. oh, it's wood now. Yes. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Like. Kendall, we have 
photos of the roof, but we don't have anything that shows the shingle that you're proposing. Am I missing it? Um, I don't know if that was included in um, the original permit. Uh, we don't have the the with us, but from the Atlas website would be where you could find the shingle. So is there a way maybe I could try and screen share that for you? We have to have it submitted into the actual hard copy evidence. Okay. Um, but similar to the last application, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone has any objections or concerns over your application. It's just more of an administrative thing where if we continue you and then in the next application, the next hearing, um, you just submit that documentation showing um, the brand of the shingle, the color of the shingle, just that, that depiction of it. Okay. All right. Hard copies of the, you know, the, the shingle, make, color, spec, you know, all that information. We, it's just so we have it sitting right here. Okay, perfect. Got it. All right, we make it Sorry, come back. I know. I apologize. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, does anyone have any other questions or comments for the applicant? No. All right, I will move to continue this. She doesn't have to put down about the plywood subroof, does she? No, no, no. No, no. no. okay. I second the motion to continue. All in favor, Brady? Aye. Moriarty, aye. Ferguson? Aye. Nault? Aye. Application is continued. HDC 22-35, two ref in place. Libby Wilson. Uh, hello, this is uh, Jack Wilson and Libby Wilson. Um, sorry, we've, we've never done this before. We're just the owners of the house. We're just putting up a fence. So we had, uh, replacing a fence. fence. We're re replacing a fence that was already here, um, from the previous owners. Okay. Um, do you have a way to share your screen and show your submitted evidence? Uh, yeah. there's pictures in the application. Yeah, so we we submitted um, photos of um, the previous the fence, the previous owners, and then um, also submitted what the fence will look like, which is again just this um, replacing its um, spruce stockade. Um, so, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, um, Bill is going to go through the what you submitted for you, and if you can just kind of walk us verbally through the pictures that he's showing that you submitted. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yep. So the, just in yellow, um, that's where the fence is going. So yeah, six feet high. Um, it's 64 feet of the spruce stockade fence. Um, and then I just, we just put some green kind of, cause we have a lot of natural coverage there. So the fence isn't going, um, all the way to the end of the property. Um, but it's, so we have, you can see right now on our on our property where the fence used to be. So there's some kind of remnants, um, and also the kind of the old posts are still there. So it's it's literally just going to be replacing exactly where it was previously. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what you can see. What was left over? We, we've cleared that out. Like we've we've thrown away, you know, some of it, but the messy looking parts. But so what? What just excuse me for as what's the closest intersecting street to where the house is? Um, so I guess West Mystic. Um, okay, you're on, you're on the north side or the south side? We're I'm not sure the the the, the side of our yard. It's it's the side that's going to be. It's on Route One. You're on, the south, water. You're you're on the south side of Route One. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yep, and so those are photos from um, the previous owners. So it's not it's not going to be. Um, quite as um, long as this. So like where you see the fence kind of connecting to the house, we're not gonna be putting uh, that back up. So it's mostly that that side area there. Uh, yeah, so again, just- You're removing that fence. Well, that's the fence, that's not there anymore. These are pictures, old pictures that the previous owners gave us um, of what the fence did look like before before it came down. So right now there's nothing except fence, like remnants and old posts. Uh, yeah, just more of what it will 
like. Um, yeah, again, so that's what's what's left. It's like a, it's a guide through history. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's the view of- That's route one. That's route one, and then our property is on the left. So the fence, I mean, right now with all the coverage, green coverage, you won't even really be able to see much of the fence. Yeah, it's, it's mostly for the winter. Uh, you can see right into our house and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, so again, it'll be kind of, um, the fence, it will be like right behind those um, trees. Yeah, the so. uh, Abervides. Yeah. I tried to plant last year, they didn't stick. So in this area where my finger is pointing? Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. So the vegetation will still be on, on uh, route one exposed right oh yeah so we're not taking down any vegetate any like major trees or yeah, any yeah. other than just like weeds you, know, um, you can do whatever you want but yeah i was just asking okay uh yeah and this was just the quote from the fence company um so yeah 64 feet of the six uh feet high spruce stockade um and yeah we included a um picture of what the fence will look like as well. Um, I don't have that. We don't have that. No. Okay, I think I emailed that to Tom after the application. Sorry, so I could pull it up on um, my screen. Does that work? No, not so much. <laughs> it's got to be submitted with the application. Yes. So, we'll so much like the two previous applications, Matt, I don't think anyone has any objections or concerns over it. We just need to get that that photo of what the fencing is going like. The, okay. the fencing. Well, on um, so Tom emailed emailed me asking for an example of what the fence looked like, and I emailed back on May nineteenth, um, and said that it was all good. So I assumed that that meant it was part of the application. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying, it, it just didn't make it into our file, which means we can't show it at the public hearing tonight, um, which is part of the problem. Um, okay, so I can't pull it up to screen share, like, um, I don't feel like we've gotten any real great direction on that. What did you say, Sarah? We have the information. I mean, if Tom has it. Yeah. I, I was just saying, I just don't feel like, I feel like we keep getting conflicting information on that. So, you know, I, as Peter was just saying, if Tom has it and it's just a matter of not making it into the file, then, you know, I suppose if you want to screen share it, then what we can do is we can, if, assuming we approve it, we'll just approve it on the contingency that this documentation is also in Tom's file and will be reconnected tomorrow. Okay. I'm yeah. good with that. Um, okay. Yeah. This works. So, so when we see Tom's file, we're going to see this uh, photograph, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. So this is a this is an email with Tom. Okay. Oh, okay. So Tom Zanarini, and then it says, "Hi, great news! Thanks for helping us." And then here's the spruce. He said that looks. He says that looks fine. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. That, that works for me. That's very that helpful. works for me. Yeah, okay. sorry. We, we thought he was putting, I, I don't know. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments for the applicant? All right. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 22-35 is closed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, HDC, HDC 22 16 12 Water Street. This was prior Tuck's edition of the Four Season Room in the back. Does anyone have any comments or motions? Make a motion to approve it. I second. Great. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Thank you. 
Brady's recused. Recused. Moriarty, aye. Ferguson, aye. Nault, aye. Application is approved. HDC 22-30, 13 Gravel Street. This was Peter Springsteel's uh, presentation on the Spike House, the addition out back in the dormers. Any comments or motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. A second. All in favor, Brady? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Nault? Aye. Application is approved. HDC 22-31, 37 in Lynch Road. This was Mr. Springsteel's application for the one-story addition on the Carpenters building. Um, I think this was house. Yes, this was the carriage house application. Does anyone have any comments or motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. All in favor, Brady. Aye. Moriarty, aye. Ferguson. Aye. Nault. Aye. The application is approved. HDC 22-32, 148 High Street. This is Mr. Springfield's application on Anna Troiano's shown accessory dwelling unit. Does anyone have any comments or motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Uh, all in favor, Brady? Aye. Moriarty, aye. Ferguson? Aye. Galt? Aye. Application is approved. HTC 22-35 to wrap in place. This was the addition of the six foot stockade fence. Any comments or motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. I would like to. Thank you. Can I, can you retract that motion for a second? Bonnie? Sure. I'd like to make a motion to approve with the evidence that is going to be, Tom has submitted within the application. That's part of the application moving forward. I make a motion to approve. I'll second that. All in favor, Brady? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Nault? Aye. Uh, Chris Bernat, Marshall Bernat, Bernat Architects, Mystic. We are uh, on here tonight for 29. Oh, this is so uh, We were here, I was, I was here virtually in the past uh, on 419 to uh, preliminarily present the project. We got some feedback. And uh, we've made some changes with that feedback. And so I'd just like to go through those tonight. Should I should I show what we had proposed before? So we can look at really on now. Or, no. Okay. So this is the existing, you know what? There's So this is the existing house, 29 gravel, and we are focusing mostly on this existing roof. We'd like to raise, elevate the existing roof a little more than three feet. Hallway on the back right now, and it's sort of one of those sloping hallways that you can barely walk down. So we're just proposing to raise the roof to get some more headroom on the second floor. And then on the back here, there's an existing low slope roof We'd like to add an addition on the back and bring that up one story. We've kept it a low slope roof, which I'll show you in order to keep the, the scale down and let the existing gable roof on this end uh, continue to reach through. In the back here, there's an existing garage. We'd like to do dormers on both the front and the back of the garage. 
this is a um, a, a full application as if we're going to cut up on the area. So this sort of proves the proof right here. Um, site plan 29 gravel. They own the lot in back as well. It is two separate lots right now. So we're sort of focused here back here and this is the existing detached garage for the doors on the front and back. Is that back lot uh, basically land lot back there? Yes. Okay. These are the two neighboring houses to the south, uh, to Cliff Street and 47 Street. Brown Street. Then the neighbor to the north, that third one across the street. So, this uh, map here shows several viewpoints that we have. Viewpoint A, looking from the south, uh, you see a little bit of the garage in the back here and the side of the house, which is most visible from the street. Viewpoint B, a little further out, viewpoint C, showing the back of the garage. And viewpoint D, that from the backyard. So, so these photos here just indicate where we work. Again, that elevation is here. We're going to be thinking and having a second story here. And there's a back. And then different viewpoints. Street and the adjacent street looking at the back. It's hard to hear you. Okay. Speak up a little bit. Okay. So to... Would you like me to review these again, Bonnie? No, no, it's fine. Okay. So the proposed design, again, this is the, um, in the past, we had the roof eave here of the elevated roof uh, matching the existing eave of the main house and we got feedback that Maybe it should be lowered, so we've gone ahead and done that. So this eave is now below the main eave of the house. Um, in the back, and, and again, we're staying to the existing footprint that's there now uh, for the stable shape. On the back, where the existing low slope roof was, we were elevating a second story, and we've kept it a uh, low slope roof with a cornice in order to try to keep the, the scale down on it. And then in the back, this is the, the south face of the garage, um, a shed dormer all the way across, and four windows in that shed door. On the front here, we are adding a window, so it now becomes three windows. We are keeping the shutters on the house on the side that faces the water. So view C, which is a little north of the house on Gravel Street, seen in the backyard, you'll see the um, shed door on the back with three windows on it. And then from the adjacent street, a little bit better view of what the back of the garage looks like with the door and three windows. The project exterior elevations indicating the work area and the materials that are proposed. We'll be using either uh, floral trim or a coil wood um, trim from the project and both will be painted. Siding would either be or open up a uh, lap side and paint it. We haven't quite decided that yet. We'll have that finalized before we put it. So you want to go back one page. Okay. So that's the water on the top there. That's, that's the, the water, water side, right? Yeah. Straight on from the street. Okay. It's an interesting treatment with the low slope roof on the left. Um, I think it actually looks good. You know, it's it's architecturally a little bit interesting. Just because you've got 
and different kinds of roof lines. Yeah, it has a little bit of that cornice, you know, trim yeah. around that because it's a low slope roof, but we, we think it helps with that gable end read from the south there. So to continue that look. But the house is still, you know, is is obviously larger in scale than the in two components over here, which I think is and I think that's an improvement. Rather than make it one continuum across on the conversation coming from the south of the when you have together. Right. <laughs> So this is the north side of the house at the top of the sheet here. And then at the bottom of the sheet is the west elevation. So this is standing in the backyard. Like you have the low slope roof here, the fireplace and chimney to the back. So this exists. Here. And who, who's got a view from the west? The empty lot. Yeah. The, the adjacent houses. What fine? The adjacent houses, and maybe you can see through their yards a little bit. Yeah. It's not very visible. That house on Eldridge, you can see through, but it's there's a lot of trees too. Yeah. And then on Pearl, uh, that second house. It, you can see through the back, but it's a long way back too. The house, the house that's right on the corner there, um, on the water, that used to belong to someone who was on the HDC. Didn't Correct. It? Correct. And, and but that's a very, it's a, it's an interesting house, very long house. Long Hugely wall. long. Like a big long wall right there. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see through that. You can barely, that garage is new. It was built within the last year and you can barely see it being built. It, it is hard to see it in the backyard and it just wrapped up not too long ago. Um, uh, recently bought this property and they'd like to expand uh, the room on the second floor of the garage. So proposing that door, there's their shed door, which goes front and back. Uh, floor plan for both the house on the first floor, second floor, and second floor of the garage. There's an existing stair in the garage on the side now that goes up to the second floor, so they need use of that. Are they making that garage an, um, an ex accessory apartment or living space, or is it just still going to be a garage? Uh, it is going to be an accessory space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Roof plans that just show the pitch of the roofs, the direction of the flat roof pitches, the shed dormers on the garage. And then we've documented the house. All the trim on the house we're proposing to exactly match the the trim that's there now like for like so we've got all the details that have documented it pictures showing what we're matching uh, we'll be using the anderson a series window clad exterior white that's it that's the presentation Nice. Oh, good. Thank you. 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 Um, I mean, I don't like accessory. Well, I like accessory. Well, it's just, it's 
Sarah, what are you saying? I was saying I, I don't love the dormers on the garage. I don't mind the dormers. And I do appreciate you dropping that roof line a little. I still just think it's a little massive, but I, it, I, it's fine. It, it, I'm not going to disapprove it. I just think it looks huge. <laughs> Um, but it looks not, it looks better than when you first came in at the exact same height. Great, thank you. Do you have any more feedback on the dormers in the garage? It's more too just much if you, it's too much. So if you go back to the house and you look at all of the different variations of the roof, the levels, which I think look great, but now you're adding a little bit more because you can see the garage from that view. So now you're adding the dormers. And you might not even be able to see them once you raise that addition up, um, but it, it doesn't match very well. Okay. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Any any issue with the dormer on the back side of the garage? Is that the by both or just the front? No, it, from my perspective, it was just looking at all of the different roof elements. Um, so I didn't. So from, about from this view here, you just there. Right. Okay. That may be just me. I don't have any problem with those dormers. I, there's not going to be a very other, another very easy way to get headroom up there. Right. And it's going to be, I mean, I, I know what Sarah's talking about, but I think it's going to be kind of a fleeting glance. It could be. Yeah. Especially once you raise that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, back it's, back very, it's very back there. So. And the other side, you can't see it all, right, Bonnie? Right. Because you can just see it through somebody else's yard. Yeah. The back, there's a roof line. You, you probably will see the dormer a little bit, but yeah. not much. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you here for a preliminary? Yeah. So, well, I don't exactly know what I'm here. What it would be called. <laughs> I have a pie on Three Pearl Street. Okay. And then there's a couple of decks. I guess I'm just kind of looking to see what we'd have to do. I just kind of took a lady at the front desk and told me to take some pictures. I don't know what it looks like. Yeah, the spatial thing on this one. Yeah. So that building there, this is like front and where, where is this located? On uh, Three Pearl Street. So is this from Leo Roche's new parking lot? Yeah. Okay. That one is, and this is actually from okay. looking down the driveway. I'm actually in the driveway, so that's, it's actually further away. And that's Leo's fence to the left, right? Yep. Yeah, so on that, they just want to go like across the front with a, just a deck and then put like a sliding door in this center window right here. So, so it's a second floor deck. Yeah. Yeah, for that one. And then they want to basically do kind of a similar thing for like the other building. This would be from like the parking lot. They want to kind of go like at a corner deck there. And so that's like, a different building there? That's yeah, it's on the same lot, but it's um, the, the front first building. building. It's behind the first building. So from that driveway we, that we saw going through before, this building here is behind that building. Uh, this one's in front of it, yo, and this one's behind it. This one's all the way in the back of the lot. Oh, okay. And then this one, like, as you're coming up the driveway, this would kind of be to kind of almost where I was standing when I took the picture. So is you're standing in the driveway there, so there you, you're almost in the street. This I'm almost kind of just actually on the side of this. I should have stood back further now that I'm looking at it. Well, that that driveway comes down on the side. Of, is that the same driveway yes. or right there? So like to the right of this, over this way, is this other building? Uh, I'm sorry. It's but over it's, here. But it's exactly. over there. But it's beyond the building right there. Yeah. Did she just buy this? Yeah, they just okay. bought it. Okay. That's why I was getting confused. Yeah. So if I'm just so we're all on the same page. This on, put your pen on one picture. No, nope, either one. So that one is to is, if we're in the street to the right. Yeah. And then if you put on the other picture, that's to the left of that building you just had your pen on, but farther back. Correct. 
this one like actually connects to there's a brick building on Pearl Street that's like commercial space. And this, oh, that's why you can't you hardly even see that house. Yeah, no, this one here. I mean, I live on Pearl and I'm trying to remember what this house is. <laughs> it's behind the commercial building that just sold. You mean Spiros's building? Yes, that's yes. why I said yeah. this was Spiros. I hardly see this house. Yeah. yeah. And does it does it is it attached to the brick house? Yeah, in the front it is. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think what you're obviously going to have to do is a little confusing for us to sit here. Right? Yeah, the hell we are. You're going to want to come in with a. You can get it from the town, a site plan that will show the footprints. Okay. Of the buildings. That's fine. And then as far as like the drawings for the decks, they have to be like something like everyone else is kind of bringing in. They have a full architectural drawing. Well, it everything. doesn't have to be full architectural, but it has to be with enough detail that we can tell where it's going to build. Size steps. I mean, we have good imaginations, but with your all right, so yeah. And and materials. And materials. Materials. But like there's all kinds of, of deck, like your rail or baluster system may be an issue depending on what you're planning. If you do some 1970s one, you know, one and a half by one and a half baluster with cutting edges at the bottom. Like that. No, that kind of <laughs> all right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, that's perfect. At least I know have an idea then. So then for the next one at the end of the month, I would just have to bring something that basically did like the site plan, something about plan, just saying what these decks are going to be. And, and a series of pictures along the street and showing the, the brick building. So, so we can orient and know what, what, what we're looking at. Okay. Because it's impossible for me no, at least to determine. Yeah. Even if you can hardly see it from the brick building, take it from the street. I'm just trying That's to a it. good point. Take the photos from the street because what we control is things that are visible from a public way. So if we can't see it, gotcha. we don't care about it. Well, uh, we're right. not supposed to care about it. All right, cool. That would be part of the pre-application. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. So you the next one, which is a pre. I think it'd be another pre like this, but hopefully with a lot more oh, yeah, orientation yeah. material. So when you come in next time, write your name on the list. OK. Because I would have called you first. <laughs> oh, all right. First. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just, I know that I kind of enjoyed actually watching everything. <laughs> okay, but did that, I mean, I think it might be helpful since you, when we walked in, you said you've never been to one of these. So I think that it might have been helpful for no, you. No, it definitely was. And seeing all the projects that are going on, that's kind of cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, we get to see them first. Yeah, <laughs> it's neat. <laughs> and, and, and as I said, you know, rail, your pattern for your rails, you know, it's, it's is there one that's like the, Better style for the balusters that you guys well, I know they it, want pressure treated, so I mean, I don't know what. Well, you know, the problem is you, you can do it in pressure, but you start to segue into rails that are probably not wholly appropriate. Yeah. All right. If you know what I mean by like talking about 1970s, yeah. or like a classic, a classic typical deck. I guess I don't, I, I've got to understand what I'm going to be able to see. Right. I don't. Because we don't know what we're going to be able to see. Yeah, really. The only thing, I mean, well, it's from Pearl Street, the main thing is just this building, because you're going to see directly down the driveway okay. to that one. This one's kind of tucked around the corner when you come up the driveway. Yeah, that's what I, I did. No, I don't I think you'll be able to yeah, see Yeah, I know. I don't know why I didn't take a picture further back. I didn't notice that. No, I don't think you'll be able to see that deck. No, you will, you will or you won't. I don't know. That's on the back side of that house. Yeah. And that's back behind that other house. And what's beyond, what's beyond, what's on the back side of this lot, the other side of this lot? There's like probably 50 feet. Bank Street, like Bank, is up. it Bank Street? There's another house actually behind it, but I don't know what street that connects to. Well, to just his contact with Tom Zanner, and he can go out and do a visual to see if it's actually vis visible. For the public. Yeah, because if something's not visible, then, you know, trees don't know. count. Them. Right. Don't go be planting some. <laughs> Probably oh, is Bank Street. Good night. You too. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. I think we have another preliminary in the wings there. Mark. Mark Love. Mark C. Yep. Mark, are you ready? I'm ready, yep. Yeah. All yours. Okay, I'll share my screen and share. 
Very nice. <laughs> you can see it? All right. Uh, before I start, um, I just want to make a comment. I was in Egypt when the Downing Cottage was approved for destruction and uh, with students. And I just wanted to make a note that um, I was asked by many people while I was there to chime in on things. And, and that, that I wrote a history book, which is a, a, a very well used textbook on the history of architecture. And in inventorying the American colonial architecture of downtown Mystic, the Downing Cottage did not make my book. And it did not make it for various reasons that it's not a pure Downing Cottage. Um, so I just wanted, I, I haven't been able to, to address the, the, the commission since that whole thing went down, but I wanted to let you know that, uh, um, that I, I wrote a, a very well vetted history book that the cottage did not make. So um, in, in allowing it to be removed, um, I think was a, a supportive vote in your part. So I'm here tonight, um, I'm Mark Amo. I'm representing, um, I'm an architect, licensed architect in Mystic, 30 years. I'm representing on 21 Gravel Street, June and Brian Carroll, uh, of, of, of whom we received approval for a rebuild of a, of a room on this side of the structure a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know, I, I assume that you all appreciate the amount of Airbnb that's going on in Mystic now. Um, if you go on the Airbnb app and act like you're, you're somebody who wants to, to rent one, the balloons that pop up are incredible. Um, and so Brian, th this is 21 Gravel Street, and Brian and June uh, live in this structure. They have actually had these neighbors that surround them remove vegetation on their property in this area right here where I'm circling my cursor so they can see the river. They come on their property. It, it's so egregious, it's not even funny. So we are here tonight to uh, propose a fence that goes from their garage along the property line of the west and down toward the water. They have spoken to this neighbor right here, I forget which number this is, who is completely concurrent with the fact that this is a big, big problem and they have no problem with the fence. And so in the public hearing, we, we'd be prepared to talk about that. Um, but, but, but back in here, uh, the neighbors that, that technically they, they approach from, I think it's Pearl Street, they literally walk through the property and remove vegetation. It's, it's, I've, I've seen this myself. It's the most egregious thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, so they wanna put up a six foot fence and that fence, will look something like this. Um, whoops, my signature. Or something like that. It's by Luther Fence, and Luther Fence, um, I've got, I've used them for 25 years. Um, it's a composite material fence. It's not the shiny vinyl uh, that I know um, has not been approved before. It's the matted version. Um, and, and, and what they're talking about is a fence that looks like this. It's the nickel gap, as this is called right here, with not a diagonal lattice, but a squared lattice at the top. Um, and it's for a couple of reasons. I, I wrote on my application that it's, it's to um, mitigate the encroachment on their privacy of their property. They're longtime property owners, and they're being encroached upon um, through, through an audible level and from a visual level by renters who are coming in on an Airbnb basis. Um, it, it's, I live on the other side of the river and we've got the same problem over there. It is, it's becoming really, really a bad issue. You, but, but you know what? Some are doing a great job and some are not. And, and those that neighbor the Carroll's property are not. Fact. Um, so, so they're proposing, again, I'm gonna go back to my CAD drawing, that's the fence. And they're proposing to put it up along their, uh, their south line, about 150 feet of fence, and come along the west line and go back to their garage. Because in this area that I'm circling, they've literally had people come through and cut brush down because they've got a beautiful view to the river. So I guess that's about it. It's pretty easy. So, I mean, I'd like to just drive by it. Initially, I don't have any objection other than to the material of the fence, which isn't a new objection for, for me. 
I don't know if anybody else has any other comments. I, I, I think based on what you described, I don't think I have an objection to the material, but what I would recommend you do is I would recommend that you actually bring a, a, bring a piece of the material in, Mark. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. An actual sample of the material, because, you know, it's, it's you know, we've talked about these the straight, you know, the shiny vinyl fence, and then there's the index vinyl fence, the, the front railings and everything on the standard building are all vinyl, but it's the non glossy um, brand. So if this is a vinyl uh, type product, or if it's a composite wood product, I think we, we have to sort of, I just like to take a look at it because I'm not familiar with the, the type. Yeah, and I know from the uh, the Luther rep that, that they've had their fence approved in the HDC before, so I'll make sure that we we bring in exactly what we intend to use and that it's the one that's been approved um, already. Okay, that'd be a good idea. With addresses as well. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Bonnie? I, I don't have any problem with it. Right. I, I think that that is outrageous that somebody is cutting that down. I had the same problem on my own property on Pearl Street and we tried to, uh, we had the police and it, it was, nothing happened. It, it's really not right. I don't yeah, know. It, it, it is kind of an out, out of control thing. Um, I live in the Broadway school on the, on the, on the uh, Stonington side. And we have one Airbnb that's very good. That they're very reputable. We have another one that they're very bad, and it's it's, it's hard to believe that there can be such a dichotomy between them. Um, but the Carol, but the, the the Carols feel really, um, really encroached upon. And I've been over there before to see this happen, and it's it's really something else. So they just want to put up a fence. Like I said, the neighbor who's been a longtime resident, which is this neighbor here on Gravel Street. Um, understands and supports what they want to do. It's really the back area here that's that's really the, uh, the issue. So yeah, well, I'll prepare, um, I'll, I'll try to get samples from Luther. We'll I've got the, I've got the document, the, the, uh, the application executed and I sent it to Linda late. Um, but nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, I did send it and we'll, uh, we'll be prepared to come in for, uh, for a hearing with, um, with what we need to uh, show you what we're going to do. Thank you, Mark. All right, appreciate your time. Anyone else? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I have one. Uh, one more, Peter Springsteel. Oh, for God's sake! This is like three to maximum. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not get testing. We zoomed them up. Our uh, what did we call? <laughs> Beamed them up. So um, 265 Noank Road, okay, here's Noank Road, West Mystic Avenue, I'll, uh, street views this so you can grab the little icon. You can see your cursor on them right now, I think, unless that's- Yeah, I can't, can't get them to show on my screen here. I'll take a second, I'll get them. Get that little bugger. Weird. Hmm. Well, you can kind of see it over here. This house sits up on a hill, set back from the road quite a bit. Um, Try once more. It's the one that has the lower driveway with the little garage down by the road. No, it doesn't. It, this one is all up the hill. There we go. You're not getting seasick here. A bad Uber experience. <laughs> I was just going to say, can we pull over first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here. So there it is right there. It's 
funny. You drive down the street a million times, you, you almost don't notice it, but it sits up on the hill high. And what we're proposing to do is an addition on the right side and then dress up the front because this house is sort of 60s, 70s feel to it and, then, and not very well executed at that. So you designed that house, Peter? <laughs> no, I missed out on that one. Okay. All right, let me go show you this other thing. What's the number? 265. Okay. So what we're going to propose to do here is this is the view from Noank Road. Um, we're proposing to do this one-story master bedroom addition. They have a very nice view of the river, actually, on the hill here. So this would be the master bedroom addition, and it's a step-down version of the main roof and stepped back. Um, and then we're going to do a uh, portico here with uh, some transitional step up to that portico, because essentially the first floor living is up a story. Um, and then new windows to replace the windows that are not so nice looking. So that's kind of what you're going to see from down the hill. That's great. Should look a lot better than it does. Yes, yeah. way better. All right. All right. All right. Much improved. Thanks, dear. Thank, Thank you. you very much, guys. Appreciate it. I think that's it. Is there anyone in the audience? Or... I think they've all answered. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything left, so I'm going to go with uh, improving the minutes, right? Is that next? Uh, public communication. Public communications. So it's in there. I gave you over there. Yes. So we have three. We have one notification on. Um, we take a break for your segments. Right. Maybe I got extra copies of two. Thank you. Thank you. What's happening? I had to go to the men's room. Oh, okay. It's a break. Playing, playing our song text. <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay. All right, we're back. So, <laughs> <laughs> the first is a letter um, that Peter forwarded. It's from Todd Levine, who's from the State Historic Preservation Office. He's been working with the Graces on their 17th Gravel Street house. Um, They've been trying to come up with an alternative to demolition. They're working through it. I'm not really entirely sure what the email is asking. I know that Peter forwarded on to um, the town attorney for a little bit more interpretation, but just so that you know that this is happening and that we can forward this to your emails. You will, okay. Yeah, I'll forward it to all of I think it has to do with the 90 day 
yeah, but from it, issuance of a demolition permit. I can't issue. tell if he's asking you that if he applies for a permit to not issue one. But that's like, what I'm thinking he is. And, and that's, he know. alludes to a few other things, which I don't think are. I mean, and that's why I wanted to get yeah, the application is going to prove the appeal period is right. over. Right. Uh, it's up to the graces what they choose to do. Um, but I'll forward that to all of you so you can see. And the other two are two um, notices of violation that Tom Zanarini had issued. One is for 8 Pearl Street. It looks like they were installing a fence. And the other is for um, 52 Pearl Street, where they uh, constructed a driveway larger than 11 feet. And it looks like Tom's working through that with them. Yeah, 8 Pearl Street was the one that Eric was asking about last meeting. So I will say that again. Eric Goodman was asking about that one last meeting. Oh, it was okay. one of the ones he wanted us to check in on. And so this is the second, gotcha. it's the second notice and final notice of violation. So I'll okay. this is be pushed on that. Okay. And then the 52 Pearl Street one is, it just came up quickly. I got an email on Sunday. I, mean, I read it on Monday morning mm -hmm. and the, they put the driveway in on Sunday. Okay. And so Tom went out yesterday and put, and put the immediate notice of violation in place for it. Yeah. And so that's where we're at. Okay, so. thank you. Um, the next thing I was going to do what are the two addresses? 8 Pearl Street and 52 Pearl Street. Okay. Can you get the approval of this? I move to approve the minutes from May 17th, 2022. I'll second it. All in favor, Brady? Aye. Mary? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. No. Aye. It's for approved. Old business. Do you have any old business? The only old business I would say is that Eric had one more that we were checking in on West Vista and they did put up a retaining wall without a permit and he's in correspondence with them trying to work that out. Trying to leave. Somewhere on West Vista. Yeah, he so, came in for other approvals for other things on his property. He did not think he needed one for the retaining wall. So. Uh, new business? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Well, with that, I move to adjourn. I'll second it. Don't be a second, but thank you for it. All right. <laughs> I thought this is the far.